In this tutorial, I'll introduce the basics of the arbitrary waveform generator, often called the AWG or just the waveform generator. This instrument is typically used to provide time varying voltages to a circuit. Voltages and currents in a circuit are categorized as being either constant or time varying. The arbitrary waveform generator can be used to apply a wide range of time varying or constant voltages to our circuits. For the most part, the voltages provided will be periodic, meaning that they repeat themselves at regular intervals. The waveform generator has two channels. Channel 1 is accessed via the W1 terminal. Its physical connector is the yellow wire on the flywire connector. Channel 2 is accessed via the W2 terminal. Its physical connector is the yellow wire with a white stripe. As with the supplies instrument, the applied voltages are relative to the device's internal ground, which can be accessed by any of the black wires on the flywire connector. To open the waveform generator, click on the WaveGen icon on the welcome window. This row of icons allows you to control which channels are being used. In the Channels drop-down menu, choose the channel you want. If both channels are chosen, both will have their own control menus. You can use this menu to synchronize the channels or allow them to operate independently. This Run All button turns on all of the selected channels. Each channel also has its own independent controls. The individual channel can be run or enabled, and a signal type can be selected here. Next, I'll give a quick overview of the fundamentals of all of these signal types. After that overview, I'll do demonstrations of the options relative to the simple and basic signal types since those tend to be the most commonly used options. I'll save detailed descriptions of the other signal types for later videos. The waveform generator provides a wide variety of different types of signals and different ways to define them. I'll summarize all of the main categories here before I do demonstrations of the most commonly used tools. The simple and basic options provide a menu of commonly used signals, such as square waves, triangular waves, sinusoids, and so on. These two are nearly identical, except that the basic choice provides some slightly different tools to define the signals. The custom option allows you to do piecewise generation of signals from a variety of different sources, including mathematical functions, files, definition of individual points, and so on. Play allows you to import files to play back. These can include audio files, such as MP3 and WAV files, or data files in a CSV format. Sweep creates signals whose frequency varies linearly with time. Finally, modulation changes the frequency or amplitude of one signal according to a second signal. The general idea is the same as that used in AM and FM radio signals. I mostly use the simple and basic options, so those are the only ones that I'll demonstrate here. The simple and basic options are very similar. They both allow you to choose from a set of predefined functions, such as square waves, sine waves, triangle waves, and so on. You can also apply constant or DC voltages using the waveform generator. Let's pick a sine wave. For any of the time varying signals, you can set either the frequency or the period. Note, however, that these parameters depend on one another, so if you change one of them, the other automatically reflects that change. The amplitude changes the range of the time varying part of the signal. While the offset moves the average value of the signal up or down. One period of the signal is shown in this window, so you can check the effect of your settings. The symmetry option
skews the signal and the phase option will shift it in time. Before I turn on power using the waveform generator, I want to give an overview of the roles of the run and the enable boxes before I demonstrate those options. You can turn the waveform generator power on and off with the run button and the enable checkbox. These two have slightly different roles that are probably not immediately apparent. The differences are based on whether the signal has an offset or a non-zero average value or not. Roughly speaking, the enable and run features let you isolate the offset from the time varying waveform. If the waveform generator is off and you click on the run button, the enable box will become automatically checked. Then both the offset and the time varying signal will be applied to your circuit. However, if the waveform generator is off and you check the enable box, only the offset or the constant part of the waveform is applied to the circuit. If the waveform generator is running and you want to turn it off, clicking on stop only turns off the time varying part of the signal. Any constant values will still be applied to the circuit. To completely turn off power to your circuit, you have to deselect the enable box after clicking stop. Alternately, if you deselect the enable box, that will turn off both the time varying and constant portions of the circuit. I've set up a sine wave with an amplitude of 2 and an offset of 2 volts. So that the waveform varies from an amplitude of 4 volts to 0 with an average value of 2. I've also connected the waveform generator to my oscilloscope. The scope function shows the wave gen output as a function of time. Right now, the WaveGen instrument is off and the scope is showing the voltage as being zero. If I click Run, the Enable box is automatically checked and the waveform is applied to the scope. The waveform ranges from zero volts to four volts as we'd expect. If I click Stop, on the waveform generator, the time varying part of the signal is removed, but the enable box is not unchecked automatically. The scope indicates that a constant value of 2 volts is still being output by the waveform generator. To completely turn off power, uncheck the enable button. Now the voltage output is zero and the waveform generator is not putting out any power. The voltage measured by the scope is zero.